Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming by. We're going to have an exciting time, a fun time here. We're painting fast, fun, free, no worries, no cares. We're actually going to be working a composition here in a style of the, a street scene. And um, we're going to paint a corner store here, a fun corner store, city scene. Um, we're going to cover all the basics of um, how you would approach like a city scene or a landscape painting or any other painting really that you're working with. If you're working in the outdoors and working with sunlight effects. So basically our sunlight's coming from the right across the picture like this. And we can kind of see the effects of the sunlight. It's bright on this side of the building. And then as we go onto this side of the other side of the building over here, it's got more shade. And then we have all the effects of those shady areas underneath the awning here. We're gonna cover all of this. And this really is just a great fun composition to do to kind of prepare yourself for paintings going into the future where you want to capture that really beautiful sunlight effect in your paintings and kind of understand the mechanics of it, the details and methods of how to get your sunlight uh, effects in your painting. So get ready, get set, grab your pencils, your paper, your paintbrushes, your paint, get everything all together. Let's work together. We'll cover the basics and fundamentals of doing a beautiful street you know, style scene like this, bright sunlight, shadows and shade, and uh, all the fun stuff with reflections in the glass and some de interesting details with some street signs and details in the windows and reflections and the beautiful sky wash. We're going to have a fun time doing this. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so we just saw the finished painting. We're doing a fast and fun and freestyle painting right now. This is something where if you maybe are out and uh, you want to do some plein air painting and you're not really in your house, your home, your place, uh, your studio, and you want to do some, maybe you have a sketchbook, you have like a nice spiral bound, uh, bound sketchbook and you want to bring out some paints and do some quick renderings, you can do this style of painting, which is, you know, really, to me, it's fun, it's exciting, it's fresh, it's uh, a free kind of feeling when you're just going to get down some ideas on your watercolor paper. So basically what I did is this would be something where you could even get some pictures when you're out and um, you, you bring them back to the studio and you can do some of these same techniques. Uh, here is a corner store. So this might be a fun like kind of a city scene. So I have a corner store here picture and uh, maybe I might change the colors up a little bit. I'm not sure. But um, in any case, you can change your color schemes. You can make uh, things a little different. You can enhance what you're doing. And you're the artist. You can create different color patterns, color schemes to your buildings, to whatever you're creating. It doesn't matter even if it's uh, if you're doing a landscape painting. You know, obviously you're going to stick with, uh, you know, your greens and earth colors. But I guess for other maybe, you know, things, you can kind of warm things up, make your greens warmer if they seem cooler you know, maybe make the greens a little cooler if they seem too warm. You know, you can adjust your colors, your color temperatures as you're painting. And you also have the freedom to change around your compositions, of course. You always hear me say these things uh, on my channel. So in this painting, I'll probably do a really fun, fast, and freestyle uh, composition with this photograph. And um, I'll change the color scheme a little bit. I'll change the color, you know... Um, uh, this colors that I see in this painting, I'm going to change them a little bit to suit my own kind of rendition of what I'd like to see. If you really want to be super critical uh, and paint it exactly the way you see it, kind of like as far as your colors go, that's fine too. But the thing I wanted to uh, kind of show here is getting a quick um, sketch done with some acetate paper, uh, acetate film. This is like a plastic We've covered this on my channel as well. You get some plastic acetate. Uh, it's made by Duralar, the kind that I use, the brand I use is Duralar. Uh, acetate paper, uh, sheets of it's a film. It's like a, a plastic film. You can look it up. It's uh, acetate, A-C-E-T-A-T-E. -E. And if you um, check that out online, you'll find probably a lot of different um, uh manufacturers that make the acetate film. I think mine is, let me check here. Uh, mine is 005.005. So I can even put it right here on my point 
zero zero five, and that's my um, acetate film. That's the thickness of this plastic acetate, and it's made by Duralar. That's the brand I use. I found this in my art store, actually. I picked it up at my local art store, supply store. You can get it online, too. So anyway, let's get our sketch done. And again, the fun thing about this is we're just going to get the basic shapes of the buildings here on the, the acetate. And you can enlarge it a little bit. So I'll enlarge this a little bit. And so I won't worry about that little bit of... Let's keep it like that. I want to get in that little bit of the ground area there. So let me do that. Yeah, that's perfect like that. Okay, so I'm going to do this. And I'm not going to get too fancy. I might just get the basic shape of the roof like that. <clears throat> Definitely we'll get the uh, corner of the building, the outside corner coming right down like so. And then we have a shadow here. And then these are the, um, this is the awning. So I'll just make my awning like so. And I'll leave out that sign, I think. And then I'll get the, um, here there's the uh, corners of the doorway, the building corners like that. And then the building goes back like this. So I go back with my line like this. So I'm basically just doing the basic sort of outlines here of what I see. There's the building trailing off and then we have our curb line here. Our curb line over here. And we have some lines in the sidewalk like so. Like that. Then we have this window over here. So we'll get the kind of the bare minimum of what we need here to kind of tell the story of this corner store and this beautiful city scene here. And uh, we'll get that in. So these are the two storefront windows. And then sometimes if you bump the, the, um, if you bump your iPad a little bit and you kind of go off course, just get it back on course again. So sometimes that happens. Now this is going to need to go smaller. So I have to get it back down to where I was before. So I got to move it around a little bit. And then when I do that, I move it around and that's pretty good right there. So sometimes if that happens, don't worry. When you draw on these uh, film over the top of your iPads or iPhones, things could get a little bit, uh, off course, you can't worry about it. You just got to adjust things until you get it back to where you think it's close. Like that. I think I'm getting it more accurate right about there. It's pretty good. Okay, and then we'll get our awning up here. And that's what's good about it. We're doing a fast and fun freestyle painting. So we don't even have to worry if we go off a little bit on our drawing, our drawing here. We're just kind of getting in our windows now up here. just like this and over here like so we're gonna get these windows over here I'm using a black sharpie marker like this which is kind of simple this over here I'm gonna leave I'm not gonna put any information over on the side of the painting so I'll simplify this even more when we're doing the painting but you know, you can add in some things, you can delete some things, but I wouldn't put in all a lot of detail. I would say, let's keep the details to a minimum. Um, I would say, yeah, let's put in a street sign maybe, though. Street signs are important. I'll put one there. This looks like a... Looks like a, a light post, maybe. I'll leave that one go for now. I'll just do one here. And maybe here there's another little small bollard, concrete bollard here for maybe tying up for um, bicycles to lean up against and whatever else. And so basically we have the basic idea of things. There's some trim up here. Maybe we can just get a couple small lines to indicate some trim. No big deal if it doesn't come out perfect. 
we'll just go right like that, right off the page. And I think this looks pretty good. This is enough that we can do a real simple sketch and then painting and have a fun time. And again, we're doing this fast, free, fun. Um, we're not worried about doing a lot of details. We're going to pretend we're kind of traveling. Maybe we're out doing sketching outdoors. Maybe we're in a group. Maybe all of us together are in a group and we're walking around with our watercolor gear and our backpack. We have a little backpack with our watercolor gear in there or a duffel bag. And we break out our small uh, sketchbook and we just have a little bit of watercolor paints and a small little palette and we're just going to put some sketches down and some color down to ha just have fun and kind of get the quick rendition of the place that we're at that we wanted to capture and that's what we're going to do here. So we take our our beautiful uh, trace lines off of our iPad. You could do this from a phone, from your home computer screen, from a TV, whatever you have to do. That's fine. You can use the TV as well. So you can, if you have a TV, television, you can use a television and use the acetate uh, film over that. You can use, again, your phone. You have iPads, electronic devices. Perfect. So now we're going to just make sure that we fit within our... We kind of talk about, let's make sure we're using a pre-cut mat so that when we are finished with this, if it turns out pretty good, let's put it in a frame right away and have it, uh, you know, ready to sell or to maybe hang up somewhere in our place, in our studio, our house. Maybe a friend would like to buy it or somebody would like to um, put it in a show or something. So here we have our uh, mat. looks pretty good. This could be somewhat like a vignette if we want to make it that way. We can paint it as large as this here. So we, we make our paper larger than our mat opening here. This happens to be a 11 by 14 pre-cut mat. 11 by 14 is the frame dimensions, the, the frame that you're going to put it in. And seven and a half by nine and a half inches is the actual window here, the uh, inside of the window. So seven and a half by nine and a half window, and then an 11 by 14. This would seem perfect working with an iPad. Like if you're working with an iPad, this type of um, mat would be a perfect size where you can kind of vignette things a little bit if you want. Or you can go with a full size and, um, you know, work it out from there. But this looks to be pretty good just like this. And then my paper is a little larger than that. I just trimmed a, a piece of paper in half off of one of my, I, this is Arches a Hot Press, which is smooth paper. So I'm using really smooth paper here, super smooth paper. This is a uh, nine inch approximately by, sorry about that. Nine by 14 is approximate size of the paper. So I have a little bit of extra paper around the edges. Okay, and I'll take that same tape that I had on my, that I was using for my iPad, and I'm just going to put that tape right here on the paper, and then we'll just start sketching. So let's take a quick break. We've done a lot of work so far, covered a lot of material, um, but you can see already it's gone pretty quickly. We got our photograph we wanted to use, or you could be outdoors and just sketching this and not really using any kind of you know, uh, electronic device, you might be out in the field and you're just trying to capture a quick scene of something, you can do that. And you basically, instead of, you know, using the plastic film, you would just sketch the same type of scene right with your pencil and just sketch it out, get the angles, get a couple windows going. Um, or you can even bring your phone or your iPad out with you to the field when you're going outdoors, let's say in painting or sketching, doing some quick uh, plein air painting. And you can use the same method. You can use the same method we're using here in the studio. And you can bring it right out into the field and do the same thing. Take a picture of the snapshot of the scene you're sitting in front of. If you're in a chair or on a park bench or um, in a chair. Take the picture. Trace it out over on the plastic. Take your sketchbook out. Tape this to your sketchbook. And then we'll show you how we're going to actually pencil draw in the, uh, the scene with some pencil. Quick pencil rendering. And then we'll be all set. And I think I'll just add one more piece of tape over here. I think if I put another piece of tape here, it's going to keep my it's going to keep my whole plastic here from going too far in any one direction. I think I ought to just do another one up here, maybe like this. And then just I'll flip 
I'll just lift my film up and down, straight up and down like this. And that should be fine. And a couple pieces of tape should work good. You could do a third if you want. Let's do a third piece of tape just so it doesn't break loose and then we have a problem. We're trying to match it up again, the lines up to the sketch, to the pencil lines that we're going to draw. So three pieces of tape should work good, I think. And uh, let's get started. And I think better yet even is let's do it this way. That's going to work better if the tape is going this way, a, a vertical. Because the tape tends to peel off when you're lifting up the plastic. So if you just kind of lift it up and you have your tape up higher like that, up higher up here, it'll tend to stay in place a little bit better. Okay, all right, let's keep it like that. And it's a little bit on a tilt, which probably is good. Might make it look more good, more exciting. <laughs> in any case, let's get started in just a second. Let's take a quick break and we'll get right back to it. All right, we're getting back now. Let's get our sketch going. I'll just spritz my palette so we're prepared. Maybe I'll just do a quick... Uh, We'll get our palette all prepped and ready to go before we start painting. So I'll just wipe up all the previous paint we were using on the on, on last week's video. That should be good. And then uh, we have fresh clean water there, so we're set. Okay, let's do our pencil sketch. And again, we're not going to go with a lot of details. We're going to keep this very, very fresh and free and fast and fun. All right, let's start right from the top here. And I just take my pencil and carefully hold my pencil right up underneath the plastic film. And I start just getting the, getting the, uh, you can almost, you can even get a few lines few lines and then connect like the dots to the lines here like that then we're going to do the center line here which is which is kind of easy that goes down this way and then right here is the awning and the awning is over here like that that there and then we'll zip on over there and we go up like this so you can see I'm just kind of sketching along here getting the basic idea of things and uh, I hope you can see the pencil lines as I'm going they're a little bit I'll go over them with a darker line but you can kind of see the dark lines we're using here anyway And then I just keep following and tracing these back and across here, like this, like that. I try to hold the plastic film as close to the paper as I can and just kind of keep the pencil, the point of the pencil right under the the magic markers marks you know the the magic marker uh lines things get a little bit, you know, you don't have to draw everything perfect. You kind of just try to get the basic idea of it. We're going to really have fun doing the painting with this. So we're going to actually not worry so much, not worry so much about getting accuracy here, but just having the fun time of the colors and getting the paint on 
quickly and uh, having a good time of it. And then we'll just some windows over here. Like that another one here. Like that. And with anything, you try this a few times and see how it how it works. Like if you can incorporate it into your uh, practicing and uh, warming up exercises maybe when you're doing some paintings and you want to warm up first and just maybe these are going to kind of be a good way to kind of warm up first and get some paint on the paper and get started and then All right, I think we have everything here. Perfect. We can lift off our plastic. And uh, let's, uh, I'll go over this with a little darker of a pencil line. Now you can even leave this really light. Like uh, it's up to you. If you like to see pencil marks on your pa paintings and you think that looks really interesting with the combination of the watercolor and pencil lines, I do enjoy that myself quite a bit. So you can do that. Or if you like to keep the pencil lines really light, then at this point in time, you wouldn't want to go over with a darker pencil line. The uh, only reason I'm going to go over with a darker pencil line right now is, well, I like to see the darker pencil line myself. And secondly, it helps you. As you're watching here, you'll see how the, um, the sketch looks. So I'm just going to get the pencil lines in a little bit darker so you can kind of see the finished... Uh, sketch. And we'll get the windows in here. And there's the door here on the corner area of the wall underneath. And this is more windows here, storefront windows. Right along the sidewalk, there's a small placard here. There's a street sign here. We have a bollard here. And we have... Um, the uh, sidewalk here and curb area. So we'll do a little bit of a darker curb line there. Same here, a little bit of a curb there. And there's a little bit of Maybe a little more detail here might work. Looks pretty good. Simple. Uh, let's do another bit of lines here. This is the top cornice of the building. Some decorative... Uh, trim up top and we have our windows
Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, this is the sunlit side over here. Let's take our magic marker, our Sharpie, and just make a, an insignia on top of our paper. The sunlight is coming from here. Like that. Shining this way. So the sunlight's um, shining on this side of the building. And then the shade side is over here. Just so it gives us an, an idea of um, when we're painting. The uh, light and shadow effects we'll see. And again, we can paint this any way we want to. As far as colors, you can change the colors around. I think I'm gonna stick with um, maybe some, some of my own ideas with colors. Um, I might vary a little bit, but I'm gonna try to keep the, the look similar. Let's see, now we have a little bit of a painted brick wall over here. So I wanna get that in there. That's like that green color we were looking at, and green is under here. I'm not sure if we're gonna keep everything exactly the same, but Let's see how it goes. All right, so let's mix up some color. And what are the brushes we're going to use? Well, we're going to use some round brushes and some flat brushes, I think. And uh, let's take a look at what we have. I'll, these are a couple flat brushes I have, so I can bring these over here. Anything else? There's some smaller ones we have. I don't think we'll need anything. So this gives us pretty much the whole gamut of brush sizes we might use. The small square flat brush here, and then some medium sized flat brush. And I think that's good. Mediums and small flat brushes should work fine. So we'll have these over here to our uh, left hand side. And we possibly might need a few round brushes, so we have some round brushes here. We'll keep these over here too on the side. And then we'll begin. So let's take another quick break. We'll mix up our colors, uh, pre-mix up everything over here so we can kind of get a feel for what colors we want to use looking at the scene. And then once we have our colors mixed up, then we can just start painting and we won't need to keep mixing. We'll just mix one time. This is a smaller size painting so you can we can probably mix all our colors right from the beginning from start to finish all the colors we'll need and then we just go in and we'll add them right to the um, painting we might have to add a few uh, a little more let's say a little more paint to the, the mixes but we won't need to add any new color so we're gonna mix all the colors we need we just might need to add a few more bits of paint to just maybe darken up uh, a few colors that we might be using as we go through the painting, we'll start with the lighter washes first. Uh, and we'll use this as, we'll use the glazing technique for this for the most part. We'll kind of do the lighter washes first, and we'll go over the top with the darker uh, washes. Okay, all right, so we will be right back in just a second. All right, now is the fun time. Let's get started with the paints. So I'll mix up a little bit of paint here. Let's go with some blue. That'll be for our sky wash. So we're gonna get a nice looking blue here. We'll make it a lighter wash. We won't go too dark with our, our sky wash. We'll mix a little bit of the two blues I have here. And I'm just using a um, Prang Oval 16 watercolor set. So sometimes it's fun just to use a, a more simple, quick and easy watercolor set than busting out all the fancy tube paints and all that. So I always suggest if you can try different methods and different paints and things, you, you probably, you'll find this is a really user-friendly set to use if you just want to do quick renderings of things because you really just, you can just open and close this set after you're done. You don't have to do any special preparation or anything like that. You just basically spritz the, um, spritz the paints with a little bit of, water with a spritzer bottle and you're ready to paint and then you can close the set up or just leave it open like this and then wait two weeks or a month later do the same thing spritz them spritz these paints like this and they're ready to be ready to paint again there's there's no worries that the paints never change they stay the same regarding the colors the colors look great 
they don't uh, there's no effect if you just leave them out and let them sit out like this so first thing I'm going to do is I'll add a little bit of um, a little bit of damp brush to the um, to the paper right above the building so on the top of the building I just want to add a a bit of damp paper like that and then I'll go in and just get some blue wash like this just having fun with it And what I like to do is, though, I want to go around this top section now with a little bit darker paint. And the reason I dampen it first is this way it doesn't run into the uh, top of the building. I want to try to keep that nice crisp line up, up there, like that. And then I can just fade this up here like this, so we can do like a vignette, like this. Let's get it good here where the uh, where the wall is the roof then we can take this up here and just kind of cover it to make sure we have enough coverage that when we put the uh, mat on top of this it's going to look fine and I'm using just like an X pattern across you know just Xing it and you can do all vertical strokes if you want or all horizontal whatever you want you can experiment I would experiment and see what looks good and I just I realize over here that's going to be outside the uh, outside of the frame and I can always take my my mat and say okay all right I'm covered yep I have everything all brushed in accordingly I don't have to worry too much and we used exactly the amount of paint I think we needed to use that should be good there we go okay now we're going to mix up that same type of wash again because we're going to need to repeat this blue in the uh, maybe in the ground below we might need to on the street and if you splash and make a little bit of splashes or whatever don't worry about it okay so now we've got the sky washing let's do the building well this is brick. Let's make the brick color. We'll start out maybe with some orange, maybe some red in there. Maybe a touch of blue in there too. All right, that looks pretty good. That's a decent brick color. And then maybe we'll just uh, we'll start getting our brick color in here. And then I wouldn't worry about, I think I'll go around the windows maybe, just like this. And I'm going to use this square brush. And I may make this a little more interesting here. And what I'll do is, What we'll do is later, we'll go over this shadow side of the building with a darker color. But for right now, this is good. And I usually try to work a little quicker here. And again, the idea here is to have fun rendering this. 
doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to make perfect edges and worry about every, you can, you can leave some things off here and there. That's okay. Kind of looks like it's fun. Okay, we're going for the middle, light middle tones here. So we're not going with any darks right now. We're gonna do that after it dries. And this is a more brick color, which is right up to here. Like this. Like that. Okay, looks pretty good. Now we're going to go with the colors we see in the painting, I think. We're just going to go for it. Why not? I was going to change the colors around, but I think I'll just leave it the way it is. This is going to be our light green. And that goes all the way through everywhere, through this section here. Square brush gives you, a, for architecture, the flat brush gives you a lot of freedom. You can just really move through sections quickly, like we're doing now, because everything is pretty much square edges. Like that. And right now you might be saying, wow, that maybe it doesn't look so great. I don't know if you think it looks that exciting at this point, but you wait until we get those darker darks in there. When we start doing the shadows and the darker tonal values um, in this painting, it really makes everything, um, it livens up a lot more and you get that feel of really beautiful sunlight when we do the shadow effects. So that's really the exciting part. So remember, wait till we're completely done before you decide if you like this or not, because in the beginning right now, it looks a little bit like, um, you know, bland and plain looking, but you'll see once we get the darker darks in there that it's going to really make everything really come to life and look really beautiful. So we've got our, basically we're start, we're going from the top, <coughs> excuse me, from the top down. So the sky and then the brick of the building. And then this is the brick, but it's been painted. So the people that probably own this property in this store, they painted the walls green, more like a lively green around their building here, their corner store. So we're uh, kind of going with that idea of um, things are, are looking I'm going to go with some angled brush strokes here. Sometimes that denotes a light bouncing around. Okay, and then we're going to go up here with some yellow. And the yellow is going to be the um, awning. So we're going to make sure first we'll do some very, very light yellow over here. This is the light side, the sunlit side, like that. And then it gets a little bit, and then we can just go with a, a little darker yellow over here, like that. And it's a little bit darker down here, like that. Okay. And a little bit of that yellow in the green doesn't hurt because that yellow kind of, that yellow works its way down into the glass and the, the wall underneath the awning. All right, looks good. I'm going with simple, fast, and fun here. Okay, 
And this is really interesting. Trying to capture the the light and shadow of everything. I'm trying to match up what I see in the photograph. So here's our photograph. So I'm just trying to match up what I see here. And we're doing all the, the lights first. And this sometimes gives me a problem. But you can kind of see that's what we're doing. We're kind of getting that first wash on, which is the main predominant color. And then on top of this, we're going to go with the um, little darker tonal values. And we'll do that in just a few minutes. Let's let this dry. I think we could actually, before we do that, let's take our um, touch of brown in that yellow here. Touch of brown. And let's get in our sidewalk, a little bit of gold. So we have some gold and brown to give us that kind of really light sidewalk feel. And I just really quickly get, get the paint on there. Over here is going to be a little darker in the shade. Over here is lighter. And again, we're painting a lot. We're painting further out than our picture frame is going to be. So you can see that we're painting way larger than we need but we just want to cover everything. So let's cover that area here, down this way, like that. Have a fun time with this. Just get the washes on there. The more carefree you are and the more you're just having fun, it'll come out much better than trying to worry about everything and the washes and this and that. Just get things close, get things approximate, that's all. Okay, so there we have it. We have our light washes completed. And then all we're gonna do now is reference back to our photograph of the scene and just start getting in our darker tonal values now. And uh, that should be kind of easy because we got the first color down, the first glazing down, and then we just worry about the the other glazing. Now, the next, next. So this is going to be fun doing the darker washes over top. We'll see how it turns out. And this is just a fun exercise too, a fun exercise and practice um, composition to do to just sort of get the feel for light and darks in pictures. So, you know, you're getting in your light glazings first and then you're putting in darker ones over top to kind of train your eye to see the lights and darks in your paintings. And a big effect is sunlight. So if you can kind of choose a lot of subject matter with sunlight in the picture where you can see the shadows and the light, dramatic shadows and light, that'll give you a better idea of light and shadow when you're painting and drawing, sketching and so forth. Um, sometimes I realize if you're painting or drawing in a, on a cloudy day, or if you're using photographs that might not have strong sunlight effects in them, then that'll be more difficult to pick up some of the shadows and um, lighten shade in a picture or in a painting or so forth. But here we're kind of just really using a photograph that has really strong sunlight in it. So that really helps us tremendously on getting those darks and lights in our paintings, which will make our paintings a lot more exciting if we can do that. Okay, so let's come right back and we'll start doing our darker glazings over this. I'm going to let this dry for about 10 or 15 minutes. And you can also use a blow dryer if you want to as well. And um, I also mentioned too, if you haven't, there's a subscribe button here on the right hand side. If you're on YouTube and you follow me and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, it's not really going to change anything. You won't get any emails or phone calls or any kind of silly stuff like that. All, you, all that happens when you click subscribe on YouTube is it basically just 
the next time you open up YouTube and go on YouTube to look at videos and art videos and things like that, you'll just see my videos on a small area of your screen, maybe on the right hand side of your screen, you might just see that I've made a new video. It'll just keep you up to speed and in contact with me as far as you'll, you'll see what I'm doing more, you know, recently. So whenever I'm making new videos, you'll probably see one or two come up on your screen, uh, you know, on the side of your screen, it won't interrupt your, your watching of YouTube or anything like that. But I always mention that if you subscribe on my channel here, it's a really a great benefit. This way you can kind of keep up to speed with what we're doing here. And uh, you can keep practicing along with this and getting better at your art and your watercolor painting. So uh, don't miss out on anything. If you subscribe, you'll be getting all the latest uh, updates when my new paintings are coming out on YouTube. And uh, we'll keep working together. Okay, so let me take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll finish up here. All right, now we're having some exciting fun because we've gotten the majority of the first wash down. So now it's a little bit easier to paint. You can imagine now, if you're, uh, you're with me here on this, you know, your first wash that you did here, this large wash that we were doing together, it's a little bit challenging. You have a lot of paper to cover, right? And, that, and I understand that. You know, you can also upsize your brush too. I think I used um, this brush here. I used one of these two, I believe, for the first wash. I think I actually use this one. So you can use larger brushes and even this might be something to use too as well for your first washes with your sky to cover more ground quickly. You can, you can kind of see I was struggling a little bit with getting the washes down on the paper. I was using the cross hatches and getting the washes in there. Sometimes it's a little more difficult to work with a larger brush, but you could probably see, I can probably get, I could probably do this. I could have done this first wash with a large brush like this. I think I just chose a smaller brush because I thought maybe I can get around things a little bit easier. You could have two brushes going at one time. So you maybe have a larger brush to do, start doing the sky washes in these larger areas. And then once you get around the windows, maybe you try to fill in as much as you can with a larger brush and then start working in your smaller brush as you're going. Uh, I wouldn't leave it till the end and then go in with your smaller brush. You probably have to use them both together at the same time. So you're maybe you're using your larger brush first and then you're just kind of using your smaller brush to um, fill in some of these areas that are a little bit or a little bit you know smaller that you might not be too comfortable doing a larger brush but you have to work that out you're the artist you got to work out what size brushes you're using but definitely always remember if you, you know you try to paint with the largest brush you can whenever you're painting that's usually like a good philosophy with watercolor because watercolor does dry fast when you're painting so you're going to always usually try to paint with the largest brush you can to get your washes in um you know, if you're using a smaller size painting, well, then you'll have to use smaller brushes. But if you have a medium sized painting like this, you know, a larger brush might work really good. So that's just something we can think about um, as you're working your techniques through doing this type of painting. And then let's get started with our um, medium and dark washes now. So we did our really our lighter washes first, our first glazing. We're using the glazing technique. Now let's start mixing in some um, medium washes. So what I'll do is I'm going to take some blue and I'll make a blue mix here, a blue wash like that. So that's kind of a good mix to have there. And uh, another mix with some blue, kind of the same mixture of blue here. Just a little more paint and less water. Maybe we'll add in some purple to that. That might look good, a little purple in there. And then we'll take some of that brick color and just leave that right in the palette and add some of that blue to it. And that gives us a little bit of a grayish color, which kind of looks good. So now we've got 
a blue color like the sky, and then we have a little bit of a purplish blue. We added some purple to that. Then we added some of our brick color, which was orange and red and brown. And then we added some blue to that. And that gives us a little bit of a grayish kind of look, which looks pretty good there. And then we're going to start working in, again, the middle, middle to dark washes. So I think the first thing we'll do is let's get the this side of the building over here. Let's get this side over here in shade. And I added a little bit of blue to that. So we're going to start to... And if you go over a spot, no big deal. Just lift up a little bit with some tissue. There's going to be shade over here too. We can even run that shade right in like that. I just mixed a little bit of orange up here to give us a warmer kind of shade where the concrete is, like that. And you can see, this really looks impactful right now. This really looks good. We have uh, some good shade on this side of the building already. And then um, let's get some of that shade over here too. And it goes from the this side here and straight across like this. So we're just taking that shadow color and then we get in some of that warm, even some green too. Let's get some of that green there mixed into that shade. And that looks pretty good. That looks like the shadow color looks pretty good. A little bit darker under here, like that. And then I'm just going to keep working my shade. colors, washes. Okay, so I'm keeping that in mind. I'm trying to keep, and we're trying to keep this loose. We're going to just get the basics done here. I'm going to have to adjust my uh, iPad. It keeps shutting off on me, the screen. So I have to go in and adjust that. That seems to be a problem. I kind of haven't used my iPad in many years, so actually I borrowed this iPad from one of my family members, so I, I'm actually borrowing it until I get one. All right, now Let's, we're going to get this over here, which looks all pretty even in tone. So that's the, that's the awning. And there is plenty of shade under there too. That shade goes all the way over here. And starts about there. And goes across there like so. So we have some interesting shadow effects. like that underneath. And I'm just trying to follow what I'm seeing. So now we're going with subtle. Subtle darks and lights. 
these are like the middle middle tones here <clears throat> we're going to do some really really dark darks soon so let's keep working along here um, these are darker down here now we can go with a smaller brush let's do a smaller square brush let's do um, let's do a lighter blue up here for this up here be careful not to lean into your other spots seems to be lighter up there some areas it's darker but I think this looks pretty good like that doesn't have to be perfect again sometimes less perfect is better for this type of painting and then over here this is darker and more grayish like that okay All right, we're really uh, making progress here. So at this point, we've got a lot of good middle tones in here. Um, I'm trying to just see, we can do a little more shadowing. Uh, let's, maybe we can use a, maybe our needlepoint brush. We'll make our needlepoint brush We'll use our needlepoint brush on some of the details up top here. This is a pretty big cornice. So we're using blue and brown and purple. Blue, brown, and purple. A little bit of red. I dry off a little bit of the paint. Now let's see if I can get a couple of interesting shadow lines here. That looks pretty good. Okay, good. Don't want to go too fancy or too detailed. Just get a couple of lines in there. There we go. Good. Now, the key is to kind of take your time putting in the darks because we don't want to go with too many darks. Um, just enough to really make everything look like it all fits together with the light and the shadow of the picture. So too many darks could actually give us a problem. So let's keep, keep in mind, let's keep it simple here. Not too much... Not too much detail. Let's try to keep the details to a minimum. Okay, so there we go. There's that. We could do a couple spots under the windows like this. We don't want any bright lights underneath the tops of the windows. That's kind of the, usually the spot where the, the shade is underneath the underside of the very tippy top of the window. If you can get a shadow in there, that really helps a lot. And also, too, the sunlight's coming from this way, so there's going to be a shadow over here, too. So that's fun to just add a shadow in there like that. Like that. That looks pretty good. Maybe one under the center of the window. Like that. That looks pretty good. And these over here, too, they have a little bit of a shadow over here all right looking good so we're gonna just continue to work some of our details but again we're not going crazy 
Um, you could add a little bit of black up here. And what that'll do is that'll really, we can use those to really get some nice, really super dark darks. Sparingly though, uh, like that. So that might be, keep your, keep your black paint separate because um, you only want to use the super really dark black in just a few locations where you think you want to have that really impactful, really dark kind of look with your shadows which would be just in a few spots here and there. Like under the windows here, we can use that. That looks really good there. And we'll use it in a few other spots. We'll use it for some detail work too. Um, so let's keep working on this and the windows we'll use that for. So let's maybe do our windows. The windows are, and again, let's do this free and fun. We're doing the window frames here for our storefront. And we're just going to have fun. Let's get those in there. Doesn't have to be perfect. Like that. Okay, and what else do we have here? Let's do some of these street signs here. So in there, and then there's a bollard over here. Let's do that. There's the curb area here. We'll do that. Put a little bit of brown in there. A little bit of red and orange. Warm that up a bit. Make it a little bit lighter for over here. Like that. And over here, this should be dry now, the paper. You gotta be careful, obviously, if the paper's not dry. So you don't wanna work on damp paper all that much. You wanna try to do these darker glazings over the top of uh, dry paper. So here I might've went a little too fast. That might be a little bit too much. Uh, going in too fast with a darker wash over the top. This is still a little damp But that might that might be okay. I think that looks all right And I think we can use a round brush here, maybe. I'm gonna rinse, I'm gonna change my water just to get some fresh water here. And maybe we'll do some. There's more shade over here. I think we're coming to a conclusion here. I think we're looking pretty good. And there's a couple more details we can do here and here. Like that. And I think it's a little bit darker under here where the door is. We could add some dark wash under here where the windows are. some shade shading that is in the glass like that
that's a little more bright yellow there, so I'll add that in. And there is a couple of Okay, now that we've done this, now we can certainly go in and get a little bit of some blue. Into the uh, sidewalk area. A little bit of blue from the sky into the sidewalk and uh, pavement, the uh, street colors. Gives it a little more interesting look if you have a little bit of the um, blue mixed in with that. That uh, sand kind of uh, warm color we put on first. I think that looks good. Um, we can always check to see if we need to blot up anything. And blot up a couple spots. And let's take a look once we put our mat over top. Again, we paint larger. We paint larger, and then when we put our mat over top, then we can kind of see how everything is looking. And I think that looks pretty good. For a fun rendition of something, this is perfect. Practicing some loose brush strokes, having fun, getting the feel of the light and dark of a painting with the sunlight. Remember, we had our sunlight insignia up here. Our light source is coming from this direction. And you can kind of see how we worked that into our composition where the light's coming from here and it's affecting really su it's sun it's lighting up this side of the wall and then as we go over here on this side of the corner of the corner store we have the shadow side so we added those darker glazings over the top there and then over here where the awning is and the shade underside of the um, awnings under here so you can kind of see just by building a quick painting like this having some fun um, and again if some minor things go wrong you don't worry about it you know you can always we're going to create more of these anyway you might want to have fun and just maybe try some different colors so i just did a quick little like that you can always change things you know maybe just you can you can just kind of soften this area out a little bit with some tissue doesn't have to be Like that, you can always do that. You can snug this over here. You can snug this up over here, like so, and then make another window, or you could leave it just like that. And then maybe you might say to yourself, oh, I know I could, we could probably make a couple more interesting, uh, maybe some window shapes here. And I would just be very careful to make them the kind of the same size and shape like that maybe just a few of these doesn't have to be like these you can just have them like that over there like that maybe have a couple lines here in the wall. Let's do a couple uh, let's do a couple of um, some writing on the uh, on the awnings. Maybe there's a little writing here. This is probably dry enough that we could put some writing on here. So we'll just pretend we're just going to put some writing on here. I'm just scribbling on, pretending. Like that. This is not quite dry enough to do this, but I'm just kind of... Let's come back, actually. Let's come back and do this the right way. I'll blot this up carefully. 
keep rolling your tissue around so you don't blot any old paint into that. So whenever you blot up paint on your painting, always remember, once you blot up one area, then you have to change your tissue around and make sure you have a clean area of tissue for your next area. So that you don't blot down paint that's on your tissue back onto your paper. That's all when you're doing some blotting techniques. So we'll blot this up. I'll just dry this off with the blow dryer quick so we can do a couple little, um, I don't know, some, uh, some writing on these awnings here. Some, uh, maybe we'll put corner store on there and maybe pretend we're just going to do some writing on here. And that'll make a big difference. It'll make it look a lot more interesting. All right, so we'll be right back in just a second. We'll let this dry off. I'll use a blow dryer to quick, quickly dry this off here, over here, the awning, so we can do some writing on there. All right, so now let's get into our final details. Let's zoom in a little bit here. I can zoom in a little bit further, like so. And you'll see, I just, I already mixed the, the red color, the red and orange uh, type color here for our, uh, our writing. So I'm just going to get some of that paint. And then we'll just maybe, I'm just going to carefully, carefully pretend I'm writing out the, the words here. So maybe the window has, we need some more, uh, just maybe a little bit of interesting, uh, maybe some, just some lines and things in the windows, maybe a few. A few uh, bits of color there. I think we could also use a little bit of um, uh, that brick color. Also in the uh, in the street area, just a little bit of that brick color reflected down into the street area and the uh, sidewalk could be a little bit effective. It really can kind of tie the painting together. Sometimes, if we use different colors and we don't. Um, like the green too, the green. If we get a little bit of that green down here too. If we kind of get some of them repeating colors down in the street level here, it kind of ties everything together. And even a little bit of green up here in the uh, brickwork a little bit. And sometimes it's even subtle, even a little bit of that subtle bit of green here in the... Uh, If we do that, if we add some of these repeating colors, same thing with over here. Just an idea. And even though it's subtle, it does have an effect. And then the blue as well. The only thing is we do want to keep this very bright over here. Okay. All right, I think that looks good. And the only thing I might do is just one more. I'll do this. 
this one more time. Just a little bit of a dark here for the, for the curb area. Okay, that looks better. It can blot, we can blot up a little bit there too, kind of make it more like that. I think that looks good. Let's try the mat one more time over the top just to kind of see how it's looking. Yeah, that looks really, really good. Then you can move it around. And again, the larger we make the overall painting, the better effect you can get with your your uh, matting. So when you're going to mat and frame this, you can have more options. If you paint the painting larger all the way out like vignette it, and then you take your mat and you can kind of move it around and you kind of feel, does it feel better with the street kind of larger there? Or does it look better if we move the mat up and have more sky showing? I think that looks maybe a little better with the um, building a little bit lower in the picture like that, like it's sitting lower in the picture. That to me looks better. And then more sky, but maybe a little more. That might be like the perfect spot there. But you decide when you go to mat this and put a frame around it, pick out a frame for it. Um, but I think we had fun here. This is an enjoyable composition to do. And again, the main reason why we wanted to create this style of painting was uh, a quicker, fun, free style painting where we're practicing the light and dark of the picture and we're getting the real strong indication that, wow, we have powerful sunlight coming from here. We have strong shadows over here on the left side of the painting. And then there's strong shadowing under our um, awning here. That, and there's cast shadows going across from this side of the building onto the sidewalk and street. The, all these kind of factors are really beautiful. The light of the sky on the reflections in the window, that's real important. And some of those really exciting dark um, shadows under the tops of the windows, which we often see when we're looking at street scenes, when we're looking at buildings and windows and doors. So these are all fun things you can kind of practice in a real, you know, free kind of format where you're not trying to actually create a finished painting, let's say, even though this could be a finished painting, it is a finished painting really. Now that we're done with it, it does look pretty good, really good. You could even take a smaller, um, mat. Let's see if we have a smaller mat over here in the studio. Now we could use one of our pre-made mats here. You know, we can kind of zoom this in a little bit if we wanted to. Like that. That looks pretty interesting too. Even making it smaller, cropping it in a little more, sometimes does make things look pretty good. And we'll zoom out a little bit. There we go. All right. So. I hope you had fun. Let's uh, get together again soon and paint, draw and paint together. And um, I want everybody to have a fun time with watercolors. Happy painting, everyone. Enjoy the journey, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.